when the gas settled around this area, according to history, the uh, Israelis and they left Israel because of war to Ethiopia, from Ethiopia to Sudan, from Sudan to Nigeria, Ife, and from Nigeria, they were able to come to this place. They were all living because of numerous of war. That was the only place that they had a very good rapport with the people around, and they settled there. They came in six badges. The last bar that came is the tall man people. The tall man people, or they are known as tall man because of what they grow. Tall is a ghost. Ghost, G O U R D S. You know, ghost. There is something like a big calabash, a big calabash. We drink water from. That thing is known as gods. That is the English name, gods. G-O-U-R-D-S, gods. But when the Europeans came, they could not pronounce the word tall. Tall man, tall man. Man means a community or a town. So when they're coming to this place, you are, I'm going to those who grow the gods. The, the gods is like a, a deep freezer or a fridge for them at that time. In those years, there were no fridges, nothing like deep freezers, but they kept their water cool. They also used mud to make something that we call cooler. And it's just a clay, and you drink from that cooler. Cooler because when you put in water, it's always cool. And some people put camphor or mud box inside and become so tasty. Currently, uh, you can't find that thing, but it's still there. So this is the cause that they grew. Hence the name, when the white man came, could not pronounce the name Tor. He said, Te, instead of Tor. Tor man, Tor man, he said, Te man, Te man, Te man. And then now the name, Tema. And that shouldn't have been. We should have still used our name Tallman. Um, like as I'm saying, we those who know, we still call it Tallman. We still tell people the name is Tallman, not Tema. Yeah. Tallman is an industrial hub. It's an industrial area. This is where we have our oil refinery. We have the cocoa processing company. We have flour mill processing company. We have still West. We have um, uh, Nestle Ghana Limited. And a lot and a lot more. Even Valco, Volta Aluminium Company. It's a, an American company that smells uh, iron in, uh, ingots. And we have iron sheets and other things. This is where they are. And because it's a harbor city, uh, cars, we see a lot of cars around. People export and import through the spot. About 70% of imports passes through Tema, and then 30% exports. Whilst when you go to Takradi, it's vice versa. 30% imports and 70% exports. At Takradi, what do they export? Raw materials, like the cocoa, like the timber, like the iron ore, like the manganese, all those things are export through Tema. But when you come to, uh, uh, I, I export to Takradi, sorry, Takradi, but with Tema, it's just uh, about 30%. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. Is that, is that much difference? Yes. Uh, he was asking of the uh, traffic between Tema and Takradi. At Takradi, just around the ports, there is traffic. Outside the port, there is no more traffic. Tema, when you're going in, sometimes, most of the time, there is traffic. 
especially the during the rush hour. Oh, there is traffic. Yes. If there are questions, I'm opening up two questions. Uh, I have one about these truck stops that the young lady mentioned last night. So, uh, I don't understand. This land belongs to the government, and somebody said, well, you have to buy the land. You have to buy the land and open up a truck stop. <laughs> I don't see that. I, mean, I know how it's done at home. Okay. But, I don't understand how you can just open a truck stop. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will definitely talk about land, but because you have come up with this, let me just scratch the faces. Um, governments, according to our constitution, government doesn't own land. The land is being owned by the chiefs. Yeah. Who are the octotons of the land? Who are the custodians of the land? Why? A government comes either four or eight years and he's gone. How do you claim the land is yours? <laughs> the chiefs, when you are installed as a chief or you are enskilled as a chief, it's with you forever until you pass on. And the land is being passed on from generation to generation through the royal succession. Not governmental succession, royal succession. So if you are royal and it gets to your turn, you are in charge of it. If the government want to have any development in your community, he has to send a committee to come and see the chief for a chief to release a land to them to go ahead. Although it's coming to your community for development, they have to come and ask you. Then, after the government gets it, the government can register in his name or whatever name you want to use for. But the government doesn't owe a land. All the land that the government has has been released to him through our able chiefs. The white man wanted to play a trick here, but that didn't work. Why? When the white man came, we have all these leaders in place already. We were calling them kings, kings and queen mothers. But the white man saying the old, they have only one king and one queen. Who is the queen? Queen Elizabeth. So apart from Queen Elizabeth, there is no way in the world who can present herself as a queen. Two, there is no more king apart from uh, uh, King Edward. Even before, before King Edward. So you are not king, but you are chief. <laughs> What is the difference between chief and king? They are the same. But they, we, we really uh, uh, recognize them as our leaders. They are spiritual leaders. They are, uh, 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 in case of any, uh, like you need wisdom or you need some understanding, whatsoever, you go to our chiefs and they will explain it to you. In the olden days, every chief has a certain place in his compound that he sits. And this is in the Bible also. It's in the Quran as well. That when Moses was chosen by God, he started to uh, uh, judge on his own. Everyone have to come to Moses for judgment if there is any problem. Then Jethro, his father-in-law, advised him that, hey, you wear yourself out. Never do this. Why can't you disseminate? Why don't you have more administrators who are going to
take care of these people in groups, in families. If they can't solve the problem, then they will bring it to you. Our forefathers have this knowledge. Our ancestors have this knowledge already. So therefore, this thing, when you come to Africa, it originates in Africa. Then the white man saw it and took it and then polished it. They say it's this. It's never true. When you talk about high life, high life now they, they uh, uh, took some things out and then they call it twist, a dance called twist. And a whole lot, they took a whole lot of things. When you come to our tradition, the administrative center of the uh, uh, our tradition, oh, it's so unique. They took all the things and they added some and took some out and they said it's this. No, it's never true. It's never true. The devil. So, if the government comes and says in this land, you go to the chief. Everybody knows this. And then the chief has to release a land. If he doesn't have it, so I'm sorry, I don't have it. So let me get in touch with my next uh, community that will be able to do this and do this and do that. And then they go ahead and do it. Yes. But government have come out with an organization that when you individual or corporate body buy a land, then you have to go there for them to regularize the land for you. That is the difference. Regularize what you said? What I mean is that the government have come out with an organization, an institution that oversee and regularize land registration. Yes, please, land registration. So that is the difference. 